on a conference call or video call, say, over the past month. Hence, yeah, I think everyone relates to it. I mean, I definitely see it, unfortunately, a lot. Now, what if I told you that extended reality, or XR, can be even better than reality, especially for the use case we just saw? Today, we have big Qualcomm XR product news that will change the way we collaborate and socialize using a combination of XR, AI, and 5G. Now, to set the stage, the digital transformation has begun. And reality is changing. We're moving towards a new world where virtually everyone and everything is connected. We're moving towards a new world where XR, which is an umbrella term for VR, AR, MR, is the next mobile platform. We're all going to be soon wearing glasses for hands-free, immersive and interactive communications and content consumption anytime, anywhere. Now, Qualcomm is at the heart of this digital transformation. Starting with the tracking algorithms, GPU optimizations, we invested in XR 10 years ago. As usual, Qualcomm makes big technology bets and invests early. You may remember many years ago, smartphone AR demonstrations. So we took those algorithms, those optimizations, move it to the chip. Snapdragon 820 was the first chip that we considered as mini, meeting the minimum requirements for immersion. That was four years ago. We built reference designs. And with the reference designs, we enabled multiple OEMs to come to market. Now, during this journey, we've been able to make virtual reality really mobile. With standalone devices like the Oculus Go, the Oculus Quest, the Vive, Focus Plus, Pico, and many others in China, allowing people to be transported into a virtual world, going inside a game, visiting a di distant location, be in the surgery room. I still remember a few years ago bringing a VR headset home, giving it to the kids, kids calling it the new world. Daddy, can I play with the new world? My turn to play with the new world. Made me realize, yes, we are indeed creating a new world. Also during this journey, we have enabled computing with digital elements overlaid on our real world through augmented reality devices like the HoloLens 2, like uh, the Glass Enterprise Edition 2, and Real Light, and many others. Earlier this year, we announced that an oil and gas company in Kazakhstan is deploying 10,000 units of a real world device to improve efficiency in their remote workforce. This is happening. And the result of the Qualcomm long-standing commitment in XR is that today, Snapdragon powers the top XR platforms in the world, Facebook, Google, Microsoft, Vive. We already launched 30 devices across augmented reality, virtual reality with Snapdragon. And the good news is that we don't intend to stop here. This is just the beginning. XR has the potential to be one of the world's most ubiquitous and disruptive technologies in the not so distant future. Now, today we already see many applications beyond gaming and entertainment. For instance, 
training and education, both in schools and enterprises. Many of you heard about the Walmart case, where every new employee in the US is trained in VR before facing a customer. Very interesting demo, by the way. Hope you all get to see. We have it uh, later today. So on the Oculus, you'll see a Walmart new employee being trained on how to face an angry customer at the cashier. You'll love it. Um, industrial logistics, where workforce now have a lookup with instructions, the manual in the field of view, medical for things like pain management, stroke rehabilitation, things you would never think about before you start to work in this um, uh, space, tourism, retail, and more. I can really stay the whole day talking about use cases here. Now, these transformative experiences are enabled by different device form factors. Started a few years ago, I think everyone remember the cardboard, you know, putting your, your smartphone in front of your eyes, or those um, gaming uh, PCs with cables and uh, lighthouses to get tracking. Those days are gone. Now, we have standalone VR and AR headsets. It's truly mobile. All the processing being done on the headset. Cable-free, simple to use, portable for truly mobile XR experiences. Qualcomm created the standalone category together with our partners and believe that the standalone category is here for the long run. Now, we also realize that one size does not fit all, that XR devices should meet the needs of different users and applications. So beyond standalone, the next form factor, the next, next category that I want to talk about and that you all should be very excited, especially in the, in the 5G industry, is what we call XR viewers where the processing is split between the headset and something you have in your pocket, like your 5G phones. We showed XR viewers for the first time MWC Barcelona. Many of you ha may have seen in our booth and um, in many uh, demonstrations since then. Now we have customers launching XR viewers, and a few of our guests later today will talk about it. I'm sure you will love it. You can imagine yourself with your 5G phone in a train or even a plane or sitting in, in a line, taking your glass accessory, putting it on, connecting to your 5G phone, and being experiencing immersive video, games, and so forth. Really pay attention to the XR viewer category, especially tied to 5G phones. Next form factor, next category. Same idea of distributed processing, but now distributed processing between the headset and a gaming type PC in proximity, in the nearby vicinity. Applications like 3D CAD design, super high performance gaming, they do need that $2,000 PC. Now, what we offer is what we call boundless XR for PC. Basically, what it is is a low latency wireless link between the headset and the PC, where I can split the processing, have the heavy workloads done on the PC, tracking and other things done in the headset, and having an amazing user experience. We announced it at GDC earlier this year. We have customers launching now. Pico, very soon we'll have this available commercially. Last category I want to talk about. Same split processing concept. Now with 5G. Boundless XR with 5G. Once you have 5G in the headset, now I can have the same split processing between headset and a more powerful engine, but now in the edge of the cloud. Remember two days ago, Nikki Palmer talking about mobile edge compute and all the infrastructure 
that Verizon and other operators are doing in Mac, well, this is what one of the use cases that it will enable, boundless XR for 5G. So now we talked about the four categories of form factors or XR devices, standalone, viewers, boundless XR for PC, boundless XR for 5G. Now let's talk about go-to-market channels, market segments. It's not just Qualcomm that is investing to make XR a reality for everyone. We're working with many partners across the consumer space, enterprise, and we see more and more operators, carriers, embracing XR as part of their product offering. Now, to tell us more about some of these key use cases in XR offering, I want to invite my colleague and friend, Andrea Hogan, Senior Director of Partner Marketing, to take us through our guest. Welcome, Andrea. Thank you, Hugo. Thank you, yeah. Thank you Hugo. Wow, aloha. Good morning. Maui in December. It feels good. All right, I am kind of curious though. So how many of you, if you are not here in Qualc with Qualcomm in Maui, will be in a cold climate somewhere else? Show of hands. Okay, I feel you. Okay, so hailing from Ireland originally, which is probably one of the wettest climates in the world, and definitely cold today, it just feels great to be here. So we've had two days of fantastic weather, but more importantly, we've had two days of incredibly innovative announcements. But innovation cannot reach its true potential without collaboration. And when innovation and collaboration converge, true magic happens. So for the next 20 minutes, I have the privilege of being able to introduce you to some of our most innovative partners that we are collaborating with to make XR magic. Collaborating with partners to innovate and push the boundaries of where XR technology is, what it can enable, and where it can lead us is important to Qualcomm. We have a very unique and special place in the ecosystem with partnerships and collaborations that span many segments. When Qualcomm innovates and breaks through, the entire ecosystem leaps forward, and the whole world benefits from the options that emerge. We are proudly, keenly, and actually very humbly aware that the XR industry looks to Qualcomm to power their products with our capabilities and features, and that our brilliant customers, and just look at this slide, Look at the scale of our partners, our OEMs like Microsoft, Lenovo, Oculus, to our enterprise solution providers like Spatial and Accenture and Mitchell, to our component and technology providers like Gore-Tex Gore and Ultraleap, and our operators like Verizon you heard from yesterday. And in the last month alone, there have been announcements in the XR space by three Korean operators, KDDI, LG+, and KT, a phenomenal amount of partners that all rely on our invention to bring their technologies, solutions uh, to consumers. So XR is going to change the way we as consumers interact with the world around us. Like in gaming, I think we can all agree that no vertical or space has been more synonymously tied to XR than gaming. Now, at the risk of being booed off stage, I will admit that I'm not a gamer, but I do know my son, like probably many of you gamers out there, would much rather be in the game of Fortnite than playing it on a screen in front of him. Consumers everywhere are enjoying venturing into new game worlds, as signaled by the recently successful Oculus Quest launch. Speaking of successful, a powerhouse in the game gaming place Unity is the creator of the world's leading 3D development platform. Unity empowers anyone, regardless of their skill level or industry. And made by Unity experiences have reached a staggering 3 billion devices. And an even more staggering 34 billion devices have been, uh, installs have been done in the last year. So to tell us more about how they're pulling audiences 
into new XR realities, please welcome Timony West, XR Director from Unity. Thank you. I'm so excited for the future that we're going to be outlining over the course of today. Uh, first, I'm going to talk about a couple things. I'm going to give a brief introduction to Unity, for those of you who don't know. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about consumer augmented and virtual reality, both where we are today and, of course, where we want to go. Now, I think you already just heard these numbers, so I'm not going to repeat them too much. 3 billion devices, 33 billion downloads. But I will do the math for you. That is 1,102 downloads a second uh, on devices of, of applications that have been made with Unity. And that doesn't just include games. Uh, let's move on. Has anyone heard of Childish Gambino? Any Childish Gambino fans here? Yeah. OK, so earlier this year, he made the first multiplayer, multi-device AR musical experience. It was made with Unity. And the cool thing about this is it allowed all of his fans to interact with him, regardless of which device they were using. Of course, there's also Beat Saber, which is the first virtual reality game to have over a million downloads. Who's played Beat Saber? I hope you have it here. All right, awesome. OK. If for those of you who haven't, you should try it out. Uh, is it a com it's a combination of Dance Dance Revolution, Guitar Hero, and Lightsabers. Of course, it's the top-selling VR game, right? OK, but these experiences and all of the other amazing experiences that have been made with Unity uh, are possible because, I'm getting a little deep here, because of changes and shifts in human-computer interaction. It is really easy to miss it when you are right in the middle of it. But the fact is that we are all now carrying devices in our pockets or picking them up and taking photos right now. Uh, Low-powered computer devices that can ingest real-world data and do something really cool with it. And we think at Unity that this is as fundamentally interesting as important as the move from a mainframe computer to the desktop computer or even when computers came online. Networking was the last great computer revolution. We all know about this. And the, the cool thing there is it took us from being on just one device and stuck to that device to being able to check our email on our phone and then go home and check it on our computer. We do it every day. Again, it's hard to, hard to see it when you're in the middle of it. But now we are in an era where we have these low-powered devices, smart speakers, self-driving cars, what have you, not just phones. They tend to be pretty high-powered, actually. But you can actually use these to interact with each other not, or have world awareness and input real-time data about the user, the environment, themselves, and other devices around them. They're not just networked. They're able to interact and react. And this is why, just to bring it back down to reality again, you can now use your face to pay for your groceries. This is the next shift. We think this is really interesting. We think this is fascinating. And this is a huge opportunity for Unity. And this has led us to change not only how we think about applications across the board, but specifically augmented and virtual reality and applications. The numbers that I showed you earlier are incredible, but they don't really speak to the bigger picture. Where do we truly see consumer augmented and virtual reality over the next decade? We think of it like this. We think that digital objects are going to become first-class citizens and that humans are going to start to be able to interact with their computers in ways where digital objects start to feel real. Let me set up a scenario. It's 10 years from now, and you want to check your email. You will have your choice. Do you want to put on your augmented reality glasses to check it to see something in 3D? Go do that. You go into work, and now you're at your desktop, and everything seamlessly syncs. Maybe you go home, and you're walking, watching Netflix on your television, but you're still wearing your glasses. And when you pick up dishes to go clean them up, Netflix follows you into the room, and it follows you into the kitchen. And your smart speakers are changing the audio along the way. Now, given Unity's leadership in real-time 3D, we have the opportunity to actually start to build these types of spatial applications. And we're currently thinking through the systems, the infrastructure, and the tools that are needed to make this a reality. That being said, we understand that making augmented and virtual reality applications, even today, is extremely difficult. And it's also pretty fundamentally different. Virtual reality and augmented reality have very different applications. They have very different use cases. They have, very, they have the need for different tools. So at Unity, we are excited to be building out the tools to help, frankly, anyone make really robust and interesting XR. And we're enabling this in three different ways. 
First, we have a new feature called the AR Foundation. An AR Foundation provides an abstraction layer that allows our developers to build once, deploy everywhere. The cool thing about this is it's not just build once, deploy to a game console. It's saying something like, hey, computer, find me a face, and it'll find the face regardless of whether what device you're using or what machine learning tools you are using. Secondly, we're making it really easy to build instant, small, embeddable experiences with our Project Tiny initiative. It is the perfect tool for allowing XR developers to make apps that are small and can download in context. And finally, we have our mixed and augmented reality studio, also known as Project Mars. And this is the authoring tool suite that we built for Unity to allow our developers to start building these multi-device, multi-environment experiences in real time and actually bring real-world data into the editor. So Qualcomm is providing this efficient computing solution to enable really great mobile XR. And Unity is laying the groundwork to provide the most accessible real-time platform on which developers can create really amazing mobile and augmented reality experiences. And we think with these two things combined, we can actually have this distributed computing future that we are all dreaming of within our lifetimes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, much. Thank you, Timony. Great to see all the incredible things the guys in Unity are doing, reaffirming that, reaffirming that they are the ultimate development platform for XR. Qualcomm has always been in the business of inventing breakthrough technologies that transform industries. In the enterprise space, XR will deliver a massive impact, enhancing, enhancing productivity, streamlining processes, enabling widespread communications and training, and ultimately providing operational efficiencies that enhance the bottom line. I jumped one ahead, sorry about that. One such company that is revolutionizing how the property, casualty, and collision repair processes are done is Mitchell International. Please welcome Debbie Day, EVP and GM of Mitchell International. Good morning. Good morning. It's great to see everybody. Um, before I launch into what exactly autophysical damage means, I'd like to share with you uh, how thrilled and happy I am to be a partner with Qualcomm in their XR program. And I would like to start out by telling you a little bit about Mitchell. First, we're headquartered in San Diego, California, same place as Qualcomm is, very, very close. And uh, Mitchell is a 73-year-old company. Now we're considered an insure tech company. And Glenn Mitchell founded uh, Mitchell in his garage in 1946. He started post-World War II by creating lists around cars, parts prices, parts descriptions. And in 1946, you can imagine what repairing a vehicle was like. Nowadays, we're going to talk about how to properly and safely repair a vehicle in 2019 and beyond. So what exactly is autophysical damage? It is literally damage to a vehicle. And the division I run is about the proper and safe restoration of a vehicle post an accident. So we connect over 300 insurance carriers with 20,000 repair facilities in the US and Canada. And as you can see here, We've got $26 billion of loss costs coming through annually, 8 million appraisals, and 20,000 repairers. So with that kind of volume moving through car accidents, you can see that uh, we have a lot of complexity in today's software. But that's not all of Mitchell. We also do even more on the medical side. So this is now damage to the body whether that's a car accident, a workman's comp claim. So we're, again, connecting insurance carriers, medical examiners, pharmacies, et cetera. But our universal mission is to help people after a challenging event. And that could be damage to the vehicle, damage to the body. And so although we're a 73-year-old company, we are now considered an insure tech company. What we talk about every day is touchless claims, digital consumer journey, combining artificial intelligence, 
5G and augmented reality. And that's what I'm about to share with you today. So how many of you have been in an accident? Have you? That's not that many. You're, we have a very safe, uh, or maybe you're not raising your hands. <laughs> so I don't know if you know, but the average consumer gets in an accident every seven years. So if you've been in an accident less than that, you're, you're, out of the, the, you're in the clear. But if you're over seven years without an accident, you may be due. So be careful. <laughs> That's what I always say, be careful. Because it's hard to uh, repair a vehicle today. And uh, this audience probably knows, via that center image, that there's an awful lot of technology on a car, a lot of sensors. And so the image on the right that shows what looks to be a left front fender actually has probably a lot of sensors behind it and that you're just not pounding out sheet metal like you used to. But to be able to put that car back on the road safely and have all those sensors work is enormously complex. Next, you may have heard this, that Uber and Lyft and other people that said, there's no need to worry about all this complexity around cars. Why? Because nobody's going to own cars. And actually, this is the Wired article, uh, who I think might be in the audience, that I really liked, which was the death of cars was greatly exaggerated, and that actually, in cities where ride sharing is the most prevalent, car ownership is increasing. So that's New York, LA, you, know, you name it, Boston, Philadelphia. And this complimentary article um, around the personal car ownership uh, by Bruce Schaller, who's the former head of the New York City Transportation Division, is really fascinating. So I'd urge you to check that out. So if that's the case, maybe the maintenance and service and repair of vehicles is really important to us. And certainly if it's you or your family, it's critically important. And that's why I like this quote by Mary Barra, which says, in the next five years, we're going to see more change in automotive than we've seen in the last 50. So why would the CEO of General Motors make that audacious statement? Audacious statement. Here's why. A car is no longer a car. A car is a computer on wheels. The average car has 60 to 100 sensors on it that ex is expected to go to 200 sensors in the next couple of years. That means 22 billion sensors for the automotive segment. And as you look at this very fascinating graphic, to me it says two things. One is look at what those sensors are doing. A lot of it is around safety. So those sensors better be right, and they better be calibrated correctly if they get damaged. That's the first thing it says. Second thing it says is that a body tech or a repair facility worker, collision repair, um, repair guy, is no, or gal, is no longer working on a car. They are more like a software engineer than a body tech of the past. So at Mitchell, we have been looking at augmented reality for years. And that's because our mission, 73-year-old company, is about people getting back into their car post an accident, and that that vehicle is like it was prior to the collision. And so you can see here, we've got a few um, experiments that we've been running with AR over the last several years. And I want to point to three automaker uses of augmented reality to make my point. The first one is Toyota. Here's an example of Toyota on the manufacturing line. What used to take two people one day to measure paint thickness, because actually that's really important, two days, I mean two people one day, now takes people four hours. They used to put a piece of paper literally on the car to measure it through the manufacturing line. Now they use augmented reality to do that same test. Next example, General Motors. General Motors, and this is a camera example, they have a capability called the Transparent Trailer View, TTV. And they put it on their 2020 vehicles, whether that be the Chevy or the GMC uh, trucks. And this is a very interesting example of AR. There's a camera on the back of the vehicle. There's a camera on the back of the trailer. And watch what happens. 
By superimposing those photos, look what you see. You've got a, a reality where I literally am looking through that trailer to understand what's going on in my environment. So here again, we have cameras that are driving a safer experience for drivers. And when those get repaired, they've got to be repaired very, very carefully. Last example is Mercedes. Pretty straightforward example in that here we've got AR being placed on the dashboard. It's helping you with navigation. How is it doing it? House signs, directions, arrows. And it's looking all of your environment. And this technology is just getting better and better. So I haven't even talked about airbags or lane departure systems or anything, but I hope that gives you a sense of what all those sensors are doing to make you safe should something happen. So coming back to our mission, proper and safe repair of a vehicle, we take super seriously. And, and I said, if you're in an accident, our mission is to make sure that your family is back in a car that still has a lane departure system that works, a backup camera that makes sure that you don't go into your mailbox or something worse. So in order to do that, we have been combining artificial intelligence and augmented reality. We did not even know that we needed something called XR at the time to be able to do a proof of concept. What I'm about to share with you is something that we've got running in Canada. I said 20,000 repair facilities are faced with this enormous challenge of repairing vehicles of enormous complexity. No cars are, there's no car that is the same anymore. And what used to be able to uh, be in one book is now an enormous mountain of information so a repairer can deal with that complexity called that vehicle. So I'd like to share a quick video with you which depicts the proof of concept that we've got running. And uh, let's roll it. I'm going to voice over this. So here, this is Mitchell's Tech Center in San Diego. Here we have a repairer looking at uh, the repair procedures. He puts on his XR glasses. This is what we've been working on with Qualcomm. The camera is invoked. He goes to the car. He scans the VIN, which is the VIN vehicle identification number. That, sends, that gets sent to Mitchell. We decode the VIN. We understand that that's a 2017 Silverado. It's got four-wheel drive. We know what repair procedures are applicable for that kind of car. We understand what the headlamp replacement is, the order in which you do things. You don't necessarily, for example, disconnect the battery at the beginning. It depends on the vehicle. Then after you remove this, you can um, remove the front. And so this technical information is being presented in the glasses, and he's verbally interacting. Zoom in, more information here. Um, bring up the, the hood procedure. And then he can, in real time, hands-free, begin to repair this vehicle. He can also phone a friend, call the OEM, call the vehicle owner, call the insurance company. So now look at what we've just seen. We've seen content, we've seen camera, we've seen technical uh, procedures, we've seen access to experts, hands-free. This, this blew people away. So a month ago, Hugo was at Mitchell's conference in Florida, and we showed this video. And I cannot tell you how excited that audience was. We also had the glasses in our, what we would call our demo hub. So just to restate, I'm really uh, thrilled that Mitchell is an inaugural partner with Qualcomm in their XR program. Uh, to look ahead in the future is just fascinating to me. Uh, we do have this running in the Qualcomm demo lounge. We'd welcome you and, uh, as, and your input. I think the future is just fascinating. This combination of 5G, AI, AR, XR, is going to do all of this and beyond. I'd like to say thank you for your time, attention, commitment, and, uh, and I hope you have a great conference. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Debbie. Okay. Mitchell's smart glasses solution is a prime example of XR delivering both innovation and value in enterprise. 
But just like Mitchell, many innovative companies and institutions are pioneering new XR solutions at scale. The Accenture XR Group helps companies envision, create, and deliver impactful XR experiences that fuel business growth. Here to tell us more about who they're helping and why companies are implementing XR in the first place, and I'm going to get this right because I've been practicing all week, is Rafa Ella Camera, Director at XR Accenture. Good morning, everyone. Uh, when it comes to XR at Accenture, we have two fundamental beliefs. The first is that XR is one of the key emerging technologies that each client of ours needs to adopt in order to be able to compete in the post-digital era, where each consumer, each employee, and each business partner will have to have their own individualized reality. That is why in April of 2017, we launched Accenture XR, our global practice with hundreds of practitioners worldwide. The second belief is that XR is a strategic ecosystem play. We take the lead at expanding the market, working closely with partners like Qualcomm, creating and deploying XR solutions that both consumers and enterprise can adopt at scale. We organize our solutions around four main areas. The first is connected worker, how to help field workers be more efficient while on the job. Immersive learning, how to create innovative learning that leads to better outcomes. Virtual merchandising, how to maximize sales from any specific physical environment. And finally, XR consumer journey, how to take the traditional digital consumer journey and extend it using AR mobile, mixed reality glasses, and VR. So let me show you an example of each quickly. KLM was looking for a way to make their technicians more efficient while performing tasks on their jobs, specifically when performing maintenance on their engines. What they have to do is they have to refer to multiple manuals throughout the process, and that can make them less accurate, and it takes a long time. So um, using the Microsoft HoloLens, we created a solution that allows them to rotate the engine, see all the parts, see what they have to do next without having to refer to a manual. That allowed us to decrease the, number of, the amount of time that it takes to look at part numbers from 45 minutes to less than three minutes. Immersive learning allows us to recreate situations that could be high risk or far away environments. Wildfire prevention is an important task, particularly in California, where SEMPRA is based. Uh, field workers have to go out, uh, they have to inspect the power lines, and that means driving out to a substation that could take a couple of hours, and then have to scour the territory, find the poles, find the infractions, tag them correctly, and get back. Using VR, we created a training situation where they can do all of that in the classroom, and that reduces the amount of time that it takes to do training from about one full day in the field to about 20 minutes in the classroom in the VR headset. What I envisioned was, you know, they put on these goggles and they see a pole, they see the lines, they see these infractions. They can use their tools to code them appropriately, identify them all, get tested at the end and see where they, you know, came close, where they might have missed some steps. Um, they also had the ability to use tools like binoculars or the IR gun. So it was quite, um, quite impressive. And we did this in a short time span of five weeks. Traditional merchandising studies lead to a process that is highly manual, slow, and expensive. Kellogg's was looking to launch a new product, Pop-Tarts Bites. And the traditional tests said that consumers expect to find new products higher up on a shelf. Using the Qualcomm reference headset, powered by the 845, uh, with embedded eye tracking, we recreated a VR store. We let people shop through it like they normally would. All the while, we tracked exactly what they were looking at, for how long and why. And we came to three conclusions by doing this. The first is that there is a high degree of correlation between the results of traditional tests and those of VR merchandising. The second is that we can do it in half the time and half the cost. But more importantly, eye tracking provided us with behavioral data that allowed us to make a different merchandising conclusion, leading to an 18% total brand increase during testing. 
Kellogg's was launching a new product, Pop-Tarts Bites. They needed market data to determine placement, assortment, and the marketing strategy in store. So in our first testing scenario, we placed the product on a high shelf and added promotional signage and captured shoppers' eye movements as they looked at virtual shelves. Eye tracking also provided us insights in consumer behavior that otherwise we would have missed. And that led us to a different merchandising conclusion to place the Pop-Tarts Bites in a lower position, resulting in an increase of total brand sales of 18%. And finally, we strongly believe that the digital consumer journey that normally goes from web to mobile has to be modernized and extended to account for what people are looking for, and that is to be immersed in the situation, be able to manipulate a product, and collaborate with others while doing that. So again, working with Qualcomm and the Intercontinental Hotels Group, we created a cross-platform solution that is immersive, interactive, and collaborative to increase the sales and the ROI of the meetings and event industry, which is a $330 billion per year industry in the US alone. We're going to be showing this specific uh, example at CS this year, so we invite all of you to come see us in Vegas. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rafaela. I can't think of a company that is better positioned to scale XR in the enterprise than Accenture. And speaking of scale, this tees me up perfectly because no conversation about bringing XR to the masses will be complete about talk without talking about our global operators. Global operators are ushering in the next generation of wireless networks to make 5G and its key benefits high bandwidth, low latency, and high quality of service, a commercial reality. XR experiences that are highly compute intensive with high definition video and graphics will benefit greatly from 5Gs, and operators are critical in driving this immersive content and applications over their network to subscribers. To tell us more about what they are doing to bring XR to the masses, please welcome on stage Yasu Yamada from KDDI. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Yamada from KDDI, a uh, Japanese carrier. Uh, today, I'd like to uh, talk about the consumer XR experience that KDDI is working on as a service in the 5G era. Focusing on our two assets for consumer XR, visual positioning service and uh, smart glasses, sorry. And let's take a look at VPS uh, little more. We have partnered with Silicon Valley startup Stafi to build city scale 3D location fingerprint maps from satellite photos. With satellite photo, you can create maps over a wider area at a lower cost. Like this, after launching application and uh, scanning the surrounding landscape localization is completed in two minutes, two seconds. And this is from Shibuya, a social innovation week in last September. You can press landmarks and the virtual signboards on the building wall. And in addition, you can press the or floating objects in the sky for fun. This is, can be seen through smart glasses in addition to smartphones soon. Next, let me introduce our smart glasses project. With Qualcomm KDDI and Unreal's collaboration, 
we now believe that smart glasses for consumer is not just a dream anymore. And light, and the light is a very light and sunglass shaped device with pretty wide field of view. It's very wide. Uh, the FOB is 53 degrees. And you don't need a special unit to operate them since they are tethered to your 5G smartphone with Qualcomm's Snapdragon. We are also creating co-branded and real light glasses to broaden the scope of demos. AU is KDDI's mobile brand name, having more than 50 million subscribers in Japan. In-store demonstration is being held at the store, our AU Shibuya in Tokyo, from last month with our original applications, such as uh, shooting game and national treasures viewing. This is very fast for Unreal Light to be demonstrated in actual store. Many visitors enjoyed what they see there with Unreal Light. Some of them even came back for this. Uh, demonstration is also planned at the other stores. And then we are very excited to launch this project successfully in 2020. Thank you. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Yamada-san. KDDI are doing so much more than just building out 5G networks. They're making big strides, big bets, and partnerships to accelerate XR. And because one operator on stage with us today is not enough to talk about all that's happening on this space, please welcome Terry Schusler, Director of Immersive Technology from Deutsche Telekom. Thank you. Aloha. I'm super excited to be here today to share with you a special preview edition of AR Field Advisor. AR Field Advisor is a cutting edge spatial computing solution for the remote field support industry from Deutsche Telekom. To build this project required finding partners who could solve key XR challenges with us. Qualcomm, their Snapdragon products accelerate high quality audio, video, and interaction experiences that we need in XR devices. 6D AI, their spatial mapping technology allows us to provide real-time holographic annotation. And real light, their innovative and real light AR glasses allow us to provide our users with hands-free head-worn experiences. By working in close collaboration with these partners, as well as others like Frozen Mountain, we've been able to build the special preview edition of AR Field Advisor for the Unreal Light glasses. Let's take a look at how it works. Let's take a look at how it works. <laughs> a field technician puts on their Unreal Light glasses and plugs it into their phone. Immediately, they see a spatial computing interface that enables them to call an expert. Once the call has been answered, the expert immediately sees what the field technician sees from the exact same point of view using the camera in the N real light glasses. Everything that the technician looks at is spatially mapped in real time. This detailed spatial map allows the expert to holographically annotate directly onto the surface of objects seen through the point of view of the field technician. Detailed reference materials can be shared by the expert and placed spatially by the field technician where it is most convenient for viewing while they perform tasks.
AR Field Advisor for N Real Life Glasses, coming in 2020. So, a big mahalo to my colleagues at Deutsche Telekom and T Systems Multimedia Solutions who have worked laboriously with our partners to make this project possible. And I want to encourage you to come take a look at a live demonstration of this in the demo station area later on. Mahalo. Thank you. Okay, Terry, since I stayed on stage to watch that video, <laughs> can you stay with me and answer a couple of questions? Certainly. So why did you focus on remote field support? Just curious. So every year there's over 2 million people who are aging out of the skilled workforce, a hard skilled workforce. And as newer, younger technicians come into to the business, um, they're challenged with even more complex technical problems that they have to solve. So the, 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 the knowledge gap that has been created is um, uh, a real problem, and we need the ability to share the expertise of these skilled workers with as many of the younger technicians yeah. as possible. Okay, makes sense. And what other projects are you creating with the Enreal Light Glasses? So, of course, we're focusing on uh, B2B use cases like this, but we're also very focused on disrupting the consumer space. We believe that the real traction with XR headworn devices will come from consumer use cases. So we believe there's disruption possible in travel, tourism, retail, both yeah. in-store and out, uh, and uh, education, and also, of course, uh, in eSports, e e electronic entertainment, and gaming. Okay. And why are headwear devices so important, do you think, for the, the future of XR? So headwear devices are important because they allow the user to Im immerse themselves more in the real world while they're performing tasks. So they have their hands free, they can socialize with human beings. We move from a heads down society to a heads up society and create a better real world experience for users. Fantastic. Well, I really appreciate you being here today, Terry. Pleasure. Thank you so, so much. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, what a cast of partners. Thank you so much for all our partners being here today. You helped bring our inventions and our XR stories to life. So we did get a glimpse today, I hope you all saw that, of XR dri driving innovation across so many industries today. But we're not done. To get a glimpse of what's in store for us tomorrow, please welcome back on stage my colleague, but much more importantly, my friend, Hugo Schwartz. Thank you so much. Thanks. All right. Hopefully, you all enjoyed all the guests that we brought um, on stage. They help us see the impact that XR is having today. Just a quick recap on what we covered today. The Qualcomm, you know, big bet in XR, the success that we have with the products, the different categories, and the, 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 the span of partnerships across consumer, enterprise, and operators. I'm super excited with both Deutsche Telekom and KDDI publicly saying that they're gonna have the, those AR glasses in 2020 paired with 5G phones. So now, Let's turn the page from where we are today to where we're going next. If you look at compute systems, entertainment, telecom, they all evolved. And today, you can have majority of these experiences using your smartphone. Now, what if I told you that in the next few years, I can see a single device that can span from AR to VR, and with the potential to substitute all the displays and screens that we have today. So now is the time. If you're playing Candy Crush, please stop. <laughs> the next step in enabling this kind of device is here. I'm happy to announce a new platform dedicated to XR that offer premium quality XR and enable never before experiences. Let's take a look in the video. Please, pay the video.
Introducing the Snapdragon XR2 5G platform. The world's first XR 5G platform combining XR, 5G, and AI to take immersion, interactivity, and connection to the next level. So we looked for the past few years and used the Snapdragon premium uh, smartphone chips in XR. But through that journey, we learned that you needed a few things that are different from a regular smartphone chip. GPU, you need multi-view. Displays, you need dual displays um, and other bells and whistles. Um, you need to accelerate certain algorithms in hardware that a smartphone chip doesn't have it. And it has many more features, but I'll save it as I introduce here in Bindi to come on stage and talk to you more about it. Now, I want to make sure that we understand and, and qualify where the XR2 fits in the family of XR uh, products. We announced the XR1 not too long ago, many new devices for mainstream products. XR1 will still be there. XR2 comes as the premium platform, as a next generation of the successful A35 and 845 in XR products. Both are uniquely designed to meet the needs of the different XR users. What's more, as usual, we're not just offering a chip. Yes, of course, we have the leading class chip for XR. But we also offer software and technology that comes together with the chip, specific, specific for XR. As part of the HMD Accelerator program, we have a reference design. I'll leave a little suspense on the specs for the reference design for the next few months. But I think for the moment that many of you were waiting, I want to now invite here in Bindi on stage to give the under the hood view of XR2. Here in, please come on stage. Thank you. How's everyone doing? All right, let's try this again. How's everyone doing? All right, there you go. So, uh, first of all, as the head of products for XR, I'm extremely honored to represent my teams live streaming around, around the world here in Maui. So XR technologies is complicated. Building XR products is even more complicated. Before we get under the hood view, let me just put some things into perspective. Over the last couple of days, we've heard a lot about 5G and the new mobile platform. One of the things that Alex pointed out of how we work is resolving the technology complexities for the betterment of our users. Think about it. Resolving the technology complexities for the betterment of users. And this is even more crucial when we think about XR. Yesterday, Keith and Chris gave you a view into how we think about our chipsets. Today, Hugo gave you an insight into why and where the vision of XR comes into play. And now, putting all these things together, I want to give you insight into why is it really complicated building these XR technologies, but honestly, it's a lot of fun. Understanding the complexities of XR begins with understanding how these products actually are. Look at this device. The displays, the number of sensors, the number of cameras, the number of displays, the different kind of displays, all this to fit into a sleek form factor because the consumers want something that they can wear in their daily lives. The device needs to perform really, really well. And if there's one thing that Qualcomm's really good at, high performance and low power. XR just doesn't stop with high performance and low power. There's another thing which adds more complexity, low latencies. So it's high performance, 
low power, and low latencies. You wake up any Qualcomm engineer, the XR engineers in the middle of the night and ask them what's really important as a part of XR products. High performance, low power, low complexities. Now, let me take you as a part of some of these use cases to think about how we think about building XR products. Put on a VR headset, you find yourself in the middle of Manhattan. You look at Hard Rock Cafe on your left, McDonald's on your right. You need to find extreme clear visuals. You hear something, you need to find extreme clear audio. The visuals are important. The audio is important. I want to give you a perspective of how we look at an end user experience and translate those into technology requirements and technology pillars. Specifically, AR pushes this even forward. That is my daughter, Gia. When she wore one of her prototypes of 835 a couple of years ago, it was an AR headset, and she saw the solar system in front of her. She said, Dad, this is awesome. She walked to her favorite planet, Saturn, and tried to touch the rings of Saturn. The interactivity, the aspect of moving in the virtual world, trying to interact with the virtual objects, with your hands, with your controllers, just became a no-brainer. That's what the teams are looking forward to and working on. Visuals, audio, interactivity. Visuals, audio, interactivity, but they're built on more foundations. And that's where the Snapdragon XR2 definition came into play. The Snapdragon XR2 definition was built by thinking about these pillars. The Snapdragon XR2 5G platform was thus defined into the pillars of visuals, audio, and interactivity, but laid on the foundation of AI and connectivity. And in this case, connectivity is 5G. I will walk you through each of these pillars and give you the new introduction of each of these pillars and new features that are being introduced here, and also compare it against our predecessor, the Snapdragon 835 and 845 that Hugo just spoke about. But before that, let me give you a very high-level overview on what this platform has to offer from the SOC perspective itself. The Snapdragon XR2 has incredible performance gains against its predecessor. The Snapdragon 835 today is the most beloved platform in VR and AR, on mobile VR and AR. The CPU and GPU is twice as high performing as compared to its predecessor. The video has four times the more pixel throughput. Display has six times more native resolution. And to top it all, the AI engine is 11 times better than its predecessor. Again, Snapdragon 835 is our most beloved platform today. We worked on it many years ago. We introduced it three years ago. And we see how the platform is being used today. XR2 is the platform of the future produced today. Now, let's walk through each of these pillars. Let's begin with visuals. When we think of visuals, we think of three different categories. You put on your headset. You need to look everywhere. It could be video. If you're a gamer, it's graphics. And of course, what you see becomes the most crucial element here, because what you see needs to align with what you see in the real life. The FOV the display clarity, and hence visuals comes into the categories of display, video, and graphics. Let's begin with gaming. It's extremely important that gaming in XR is very different than what we see in today's consumer electronic devices. And the reason is, as we heard before from some of our partners, gaming with consumer electronic devices is playing a game. In XR, you are in the game. You are a part of the game. And that's why if you see what you see around doesn't align with the real world, it doesn't, the, your, the brain says, ah, this is not true. And all the experiences of VR has to align with that. As a part of XR2 for the high performance graphics, we are providing 1.5 times more shader processing than its predecessor and 1.5 times and 3 times the pixel and texel rates. 
This is crucial because the shading and the rendering of the games that you're seeing in front of your eyes needs to be really, really important. More importantly is the 3K by 3K per eye native resolution support at 90 frames per second. So that's what we offer in terms of graphics and gaming. Next is video. Gaming is big today, as we heard earlier in the uh, day today, as well as yesterday. But everybody, almost everybody is a viewer. How many of you have seen the movie Frozen 2? Anybody seen the movie Frozen 2? Right? Imagine, I mean, I'm a big fan of Frozen 2. Imagine wearing VR glass and finding yourself in Arendelle, finding yourself with Elsa and Anna and especially Olaf, and enjoying that experience. Now, a mix of these graphics, mix and watching videos, becomes a much more crucial element in VR. And the reason it becomes much more crucial is because you're watching 360 videos. I am proud to announce that as a part of Snapdragon XR2, we continue to support all the features that we already have, but on top of that, for the first time ever, we are introducing a platform that supports 8K at 60 frames per second decode in a 360 video environment. Thank you. I know most of you are looking forward to the Luau and the Mai Tais tonight. <laughs> Me too, but the best is yet to come. Four times more pixel throughput, and I know there was somebody in the audience yesterday who met me outside and said, what about the high refresh rates? This is what it is. 120 hertz, we're gonna be supporting 120 hertz refresh rates in XR. We continue to support advanced color processing with HDR10 and HDR10+, Plus, like we've done before in our platforms. However, there's one thing that I want to highlight here. For XR2, we have implemented custom silicon specifically for AR displays. As I said before, high performance and low power is crucial. But what's also crucial as a part of XR experiences is low latencies. The reason it's important is, for example, I look on my right here, I see my friend sitting here. I look straight, I see Alex and Keith sitting here. I see the left, I see other folks sitting here. That's the experience I need to have in XR. When I wear my glasses and I look to the right or left, if it's a VR glass, I want to see the world just like it would in the real world. If I'm wearing an AR glass, the virtual object should not be moving. Latency is a crucial element of AR. And so we've added custom silicon to help with specific AR displays. That was the visual spiller. Graphics, display, and video. Now, let's look into the next pillar, that is audio. In the past, when we've introduced our XR products and uh, our XR platform, we have introduced a 3D audio SDK. We've introduced the support of Aptex Audio. And we continue to support that. However, as a part of Snapdragon XR2 platform, Amongst all features, I want to highlight three features today. First, specific to gaming. In a VR game, when you are playing with other players or by yourself, it's you are in the game rather than just playing the game. And when you are in the game, you might have a controller, hand tracking. However, it's also important to interact like you would be there in the real life. So voice UI becomes a very crucial element. For example, open door. The ability for any device or any uh, end product to allow gamers to enable features like this becomes crucially important. Other feature is context detection. How many of you watch late night movies or like playing with your video games late in the night? All right. So I'm one of those guys as well. Audio context detection becomes really important, but you still want to be in touch with the real world. Imagine you have a young child, young baby in a different room, and you have a baby monitor there, or your baby sleeping right next to you. You want to be in a situation where the device alerts you. That's where context detection comes into place. So for an example like this, I 
I wish all babies cried that cutely. <laughs> when my son cried three years ago, I'd wake up like there's an earthquake going on. All right, so that was context detection. Next, one of the most crucial elements of XR is social experiences in gaming. Social experiences in gaming is important, especially when players are playing with each other. And that's why multiplayer communication becomes a key crucial aspect. Having the ability for players to talk to each other during these games is very important. So we've looked at visuals as a pillar, graphics, display, video. We've looked at audio as a pillar. Now I'm excited to talk about a very crucial element, especially for XR, the pillar of interactions. Interactivity in an XR world is very important. For folks who've played or who've tried VR devices and AR devices, you know how important it is to move in the virtual world and interact with the virtual objects in the virtual world. The element that, one of the most crucial element that helps with these interactions is cameras. I'm sure some of you must have been thinking, isn't camera a part of visuals? It is. But cameras also play an extremely crucial role of interactions itself. Cameras are used for multi-purpose tracking in AR and VR devices. Ladies and gentlemen, for the first time ever on an XR platform, on a mobile platform, we are introducing the world's first seven concurrent cameras. The number of cameras is always important. We've supported multiple cameras in the past using additional combiners or bridge chips. However, having concurrent cameras makes it extremely crucial because when you run these algorithms concurrently, at this, this helps reduce latencies. We are enabling our OEMs to use these cameras however they like, in the front for RGB, up for head tracking, looking for more RGB cameras for video see-through, or for eye tracking or facial lip tracking. We have our own custom variant for the reference device that we are using, that Hugo said we're gonna keep it as a suspense for the next couple of months, but our OEMs can use it in any way possible. Again, this is where resolving complexities of technologies to help our customers as well as the end consumers comes into play. Now, I know I see a few faces like, how are you gonna use seven cameras? Weren't three or four cameras in a phone already enough? Well, let's see these applications. XR Devices uses cameras in all these different applications, right from head tracking, to eye tracking, to controller tracking, to facial tracking. And our customers are demanding more cameras day by day. One of the things that Hugo spoke about when we, how did XR2 come into play? When we started designing XR2 and when 835 was being used by our customers, this was one of the key requirements. Qualcomm, we do require more cameras. How can you help us get more cameras, more concurrent cameras? And that's where the team started working in enabling this as a part of XR2. The feature that can be enabled with XR2 with these concurrent cameras and interactivity is what I'm going to show you now. In 2017, on this stage, we showed you this feature as something that we see happening in the distant future. Last year, when I spoke about entertainment in Snapdragon 855, I showed you similar slides saying that, hey, this is something that might come in the future. Qualcomm walks the talk. I am proud to introduce 3D reconstruction and semantic segmentation enablement as a part of XR2. The ability to wear a VR device, map the environment, and transform it to a virtual world, just like you see here, is something that's going to be possible by the technology and by the XR2 platform. Visuals, audio, interactivity each of these components, be it the world-class GPU, or the CPU, or the Hexagon DSP, all are enabled by a strong AI engine, 11 times better than its predecessor. 
And what's going to be possible with that is some of these technologies that you see here. 3D reconstruction, semantic segmentation, object detection, the ability to wear glasses. If you're wearing a VR glass and then you're in a conference room or in your room, if you're going and uh, walking near a couch, the ability to get that alert, object detection. If you're wearing an AR glass and you want to see a, uh, let's say a shark uh, swimming around the room and going behind the chair, coming in front of a person, going behind a chair again, object occlusion, understanding depth, and also, of course, providing controllers and hand tracking are some of the most crucial elements that are going to be supported in Snapdragon XR2 as AI. What I'm going to talk about next is something Qualcomm has never spoken before, mixed reality. With Snapdragon XR2, we are going to support true mixed reality. What does this mean? The ability to wear a VR glass and see levels of emergence, be it a complete virtual world or the complete real world still wearing a VR glass with having different levels of immersion. So you're wearing a VR glass, you're in a virtual world, but the ability to have the real world objects in that, or you are in, you're seeing the real world and having AR-like experiences with virtual objects is true mixed reality. And we are going to be able to support this with a video see-through for the first time in Snapdragon XR2. Visuals, audio, and interactivity pillars built on the foundation of AI. Now I'm excited to talk about the last but not the least foundation, which is connectivity, and in this case, 5G. I always get asked the question, how do XR and 5G go together? Well, there's a lot of use cases. Some of them our partners have already shared right now. XR2, using Snapdragon and Qualcomm's most powerful modem is going to enable some of these use cases. I would like to talk about two. One is video streaming. As Nikki Palmer on day one mentioned, video streaming is not going anywhere, and especially in XR. We see video streaming as one of the most key use cases, especially in VR devices. For 360 videos with high resolution, high bandwidth, and low latencies requires 5G. Imagine wearing a VR glass, watching a 360 video movie with high resolution bandwidth, and then watching across in the virtual world, what do we need? We need to see high resolution of that video always being seen through. The latency needs to be ultra low because when you move your head, it needs to give you the real world experience. What, is, what provides high bandwidth, low latency, 5G. That's video streaming. The other use case is gaming. Hugo briefly touched upon Boundless XR. We have been able to enable mobile gaming on XR in a huge way. Snapdragon 835 has changed the course of history in, with mobile gaming and mobile VR. However, one of the key things with which the journey of XR began was to ensure that there are no wires and cables. What this has enabled is mobile gaming, but we also want to use and capitalize on these high fidelity graphics on the cloud and on the PCs. And that's where Boundless XR comes into play. Wearing VR devices and being able to use and play the games on the cloud is something that's going to be enabled by 5G. 5G and Boundless XR are the future. That's how 5G forms the foundation of the connectivity as a part of XR2. With this, I'd like to summarize what Snapdragon XR2 has to offer. It's the world's first 5G XR platform, providing twice the better CPU and GPU as compared to its predecessor. First, support for 3K by 3K per eye, a dedicated computer vision processor, first platform to support 8K 360 video at 60 frames per second, true mixed realities and true mixed reality and a lot of new features. I really appreciate you guys being here. Looking forward to uh, seeing you guys at the Luau tonight. However, 
the show is not over yet. XR, AI, 5G. We've been speaking about this for the last hour and a half. Every now and then comes a point of time in history where collaboration and partnership between two giants helps push the envelope for any technology forward. I consider this as one of those moments. When we think of AR, when we think of an AR game, it's synonymous with the word Pokemon Go, Pikachu. To talk more about XR, AI, and 5G, I am humbled and extremely proud to call on stage Phil Kesslin, co-founder and CTO of Niantic. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Hiran. Aloha. So I'm absolutely thrilled to be here with all of you in Hawaii, a truly great place for adventuring outside. Um, being here reminds me of the creation of Pokemon Go and the code name that we came up uh, for that, that particular title. Uh, it comes from a Hawaiian phrase, holo holo, which means to go on an excursion, whether it's a walk, a bike ride, sailing adventure, or a fishing trip, simply for the fun of it. <clears throat> we felt that that phrase really captured what it was we were trying to do with Pokemon Go, and so that became our project name. <clears throat> we wanted to keep it totally top of mind. Adventuring outside is really the heart of Niantic. Our goal and our mission for the company is to get people outside, exploring the world around them, getting a little exercise along the way, and doing it in the company of other people. All of our products capture that vision, from Ingress to Pokemon Go to Harry Potter's Wizards Unite, and they're all built to drive that mission forward. To make it easier for us and for others to create similar types of experiences, we created the Niantic Real World Platform. It powers all of our current products and all of our future products as well. That particular platform contains all the features necessary to create these outdoor experiences from our augmented reality developer kit and cloud mapping functions to our spatial computing engine, which drives all of our games. And finally, our event. Most people don't know about those. The picture that they showed earlier was of an event, the Pokemon Go Fest. Um, we actually have a great deal of infrastructure needed to actually implement and manage those particular events, whether it's from tens of thousands of people to hundreds of thousands in a particular event. Our goal is to continue to evolve the real world platform as technology advances and take that technology to inspire new features in games, both current products and future products, um, <coughs> as, as technology advances. And for that, we are excited, to, is in building for that future that we're excited to announce, our intention to execute a multi-year collaboration with Qualcomm to create a new category of augmented reality glasses aimed at consumers. The reference designs for AR glasses, um, including the software integration between Snapdragon platform APIs and our real world platform, are what we see as the outcome of this. And the first design of that will leverage Qualcomm's amazing XR2 platform within our augmented reality developer kit and our cloud mapping features within the real world platform. Additionally, we intend on leveraging 5G, which has the potential to unlock many of the large-scale multiplayer features that we're currently working on today. Its low latency combined with high bandwidth allow for highly interactive, shared social experiences, which will make adventuring outside even more enticing to our, to our users. We are incredibly excited to combine the expertise and strengths of Niantic and Qualcomm we're going to leverage Niantic's proven augmented reality hardware, software, and cloud technologies to complement, and we believe that Niantic's proven AR hardware, software, and um, cloud technologies are a perfect complement to Qualcomm's platform APIs and hardware. And our joint effort is designed to accelerate development of AR glasses for consumers and to move that entire category forward. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you so much, Phil. Super excited to see what XR2 will bring to the industry and also this amazing partnership with Niantic. 
so bringing AR uh, to consumers with XR2. Now, let me, as we wrap up our XR um, session, I want to talk about my favorite use case. And actually, remember the video we started today? Let's go back to it. Uh, here I show a map of how communication evolved with the wireless generations. 1G, voice, analog voice. 2G, digital voice, better quality, SMS. 3G, many of you, I think, were here um, when 3G was being developed and what was one of the killer use cases? Video calling. 4G, better video calling. Now 5G, when XR and AI, and AI come together, holographic telepresence. So we are actually excited to show a glimpse into how the future of collaboration based on it, the Snapdragon XR2 platform is going to um, evolve. In a moment, you're going to see a live demo of a holographic telepresence where participants are collaborating in augmented and virtual reality meeting, just like you may have seen in movies like The Kingsman or Avenger. We've teamed up with Spatial to enable the solution to their customer, Purina. First, let's hear from their customer, Purina. We're starting to see the effect of the digital age. When you're in a meeting, you really want people to be engaged. When you're sitting passive, listening on the phone, or you're in some type of virtual meeting on the internet, it's very easy to get sidetracked. On average, 70 to 80% of our communication is nonverbal, which is the hand gestures, looking at, looking at each other in the eyes, um, being able to hear tone a structure. And when we went to digital and virtual, whether it's on the phone, whether it's through just text, we lost all the nonverbal communication. So that means in most cases, the most of our message that's ever truly received is 30%. And we all believe that we, we can multitask. Well, we can, we can multitask, we just can't multi-attention. I know some companies are going to webcams, you know, doing a lot of their meetings that way, so that way there is that non-verbal, but it's still limited. And so, you know, one of the things that we're actually looking at is going down the virtual reality route. Okay, so now to walk us through this demo using our XR2 platform, I want to invite Jacob Lowenstein, VP of Business Development from Spatial. Jacob, please. Uh, hello, everybody. So, as you just heard, Purina needed a solution that's engaging and enables nonverbal communication. They fell in love with Spatial, which I'm about to show you. What's insanely exciting about this demo is that it's the world's first to be completely cross-platform and cross-reality. I'm joining in VR through the Snapdragon XR2 prototype headset. Cole will be joining remotely, also in VR, through an Oculus Quest. Bree, remotely in AR slash MR through a HoloLens 2. And even our brilliant cameraman here, AV, is joining in AR as a full participant using a Snapdragon 855 smartphone. This is especially great because not everyone needs to have the same device. They can join with whichever device they have. So follow me, and we're going to jump into Spatial in an XR2 headset where a couple of my colleagues are already waiting for me. And they're going to be showing us our first use case, which is brainstorming product design with Purina. Thank you. OK. So through the camera that AV is holding, right, that you're seeing on screen, you're seeing exactly what I'm seeing through the XR2. So, hey Cole, hey Bree, what's going on? Hey Jacob. Hi Jacob. So we've created these photorealistic 3D avatars from a single photo using machine learning. With the processing power of the Snapdragon XR2 platform, we can capture tons of special elements like the opacity of the skin and the fibers of the hair. Furthermore, the eye tracking brings the avatars to life. Now, you'll also notice that this room is pre-populated with 2D content. 
Think of the spatial environment like a living version of your team's project channel that they could return to over and over. And the XR2's unparalleled hand tracking solution is going to enable our avatars to behave realistically, including hand gestures, which are a major, major part of how we express ourselves. Now, in addition to loading content directly into Spatial, you can also access content from your other devices. For example, in a design review meeting, we may want to spontaneously do some market research and review last year's line. So I can share my screen and navigate to Purina's website, and the experience feels like we're all in a conference room together sharing a screen. Hmm. If we had notes or wanted to dynamically edit the document, we can do it all live together. So now you're seeing that Spatial is incredibly useful for collaboration on 2D content. It's also transformative for working on 3D content. As a result, you can now conduct a meeting holographically that would ordinarily require expensive and exhausting travel. Unless, of course, your meeting is in Maui. And then I think 100,000% you're going to travel. Speaking of which, it's suddenly looking very tropical in here. Sorry, I was a little <laughs> jealous of all the Snapdragon Tech Summit attendees, but I made sure to include Purina's packaging content as well. We can take them into our hands and scale them, move them around, and even modify them. With Spatial Scribble, we can annotate where we think modifications need to be made. We can cross out parts that I don't like, or indicate whether or not things need to be moved. Hmm. And using Spatial's phone app, I can even bring in additional content, like a logo and swipe it up into the space. We can then pin that logo to the 3D model and plan to add it offline following the meeting. Oh, cool. Now, after these changes have been made, they persist. This means that the holographic space can be shared with the rest of the company, the design team, the digital agency, or even the merchandising team. They can also access the content across a variety of different headsets, and even their phone or PC. So now you've seen how users across multiple locations can leverage different devices in order to collaborate on 2D and 3D information. The use cases have included both the brainstorming and design phases of product development. To wrap up, you'll now see how you can collaborate in big, immersive environments for coordinating merchandising. So I think the first thing you should notice is that I am suddenly avatar visible wearing a snazzy orange t-shirt. And for me, that's just because spooky season is a 365 affair. But returning to this period of use case here, after Purina has brainstormed a product and then mocked up 3D designs to refine what they plan to produce, they need to actually sell it. This entails planning the layout of retail areas to determine how to present the product to consumers. Ensuring the plans translate is a process that requires significant travel to stores where the product's being sold. In this immersive environment, we can note to one another where in the store products should be displayed and how they should be arranged. We can even walk around the store and observe the products from different angles to better understand customer perspective. You'll notice how beautiful and encompassing the store environment is. With the Snapdragon XR2's graphics capabilities, you can load realistic models and environments, enabling an unprecedented level of immersion. So despite the team being distributed, you can holographically meet in an environment as if you're really there, rapidly speeding up the process of planning product merchandising. Cool. Guys, thanks so much for joining me. I guess I'll say aloha, and we'll talk soon. Bye, Bye Jacob. Jacob. Uh, thank you. So as you can see, Spatial's holographic collaboration solution enables you all to work as if you're in the same room, no matter where you are and no matter what device you have. With the Snapdragon XR2 platform and 5G powering the XR devices of the near future, your organization will collaborate more immersively with better graphics and performance. You can also meet for longer sessions due to the XR2's low power consumption, drilled into my brain from here and from the last talk. <laughs> Combining Spatial with headsets powered by the Snapdragon XR2 platform saves companies like Purina from needless business travel and enables your distributed teams to work more efficiently and more collaboratively together. Spatial is available on today's platforms, including HoloLens 2, Oculus Quest, and Magic Leap, and will be coming to the Snapdragon XR2 power devices with both eye tracking and hand tracking very, very soon. 
Thank you so much for the time. Thank you, Qualcomm. Thank you, Hugo. That's all I got. Awesome. All right. <laughs> so that sums it up. I hope you are as excited as I am with XR2. And with the partnerships we announced today, Niantic.